Hey everybody, the other day I got a dreaded check engine light on my 2011 Malibu. So I used my torque app that you see here to read it. And that is the B camshaft position sensor actuated circuit bank at one. And really what that means is the variable valve timing B position, which is the exhaust side. So this one's going to be pretty easy to fix. Uh, kind of the first things first is I uh, had to go on the interwebs and find myself another camshaft sensor found it there it is it's like twenty dollars off rock auto place the order not a big deal uh, and what we're going to do is i'm just going to walk you through this now the echo tech engine the 2.4 echo tech engine was in a lot of engines from 2006 to 2012 give or take uh you know saturn ion the view malibu pontiac g5 and g6 the cobalt ss and hhr uh, all had these so this is a pretty common engine. The, the first thing you do is you pop off that front cover. And I don't have the correct wrench for this. I know Snap-on makes one, but I, I'm hard-pressed to spend $120 on a, on a wrench or a the, the specific tool when I can just use a pair of needle-nose pliers to pull that tube right off. So that, that, that one piece that you saw pull off was the entire piece. Now I'm pointing at the first one. Uh, closest to me is the intake variable valve time cam sensor. Uh, the one furthest, the one on the exhaust side, is the one that we're going to replace because that's B. If, if, if the code had said A, it's going to be on the uh, intake side, but that was on that side. Now this one, my, my hands were cold and I couldn't quite get the plug, so I had to use a screwdriver to kind of pop it off. So I had to be very careful because these things can be kind of brittle. 170,000 miles, you know, I and mean, the motor's going strong and the motor has had very little issues. I mean, I've just changed the oil plugs, done general maintenance like I should, but otherwise pretty good. And the cam sensor itself is he held in by a 10 millimeter bolt uh, that you get, uh, you get a new one with the new cam sensor that you buy. Uh, the problem that I had though was, you know, 170,000 miles with tons and tons of heat cycles. What you're going to run into is this thing's going to be stuck in kind of in place so what I had to do is I had to use a pair of uh, pliers that was normally meant for spark plug wires and you'll see here it's not I don't get a very good shot of me pulling it up but you, you do kind of have to twist and pull at the same time because that cam sensor is in there pretty deep so uh, this is a pretty easy fix to do you can do this at home not with you know minimal tools but you see I pulled it out there with that kind of modified pair of pliers uh, there is oil in there, and you see me spill it, so i got to clean it up. That's, you know, whoops, <laughs> I didn't realize there was going to be oil coming out of there. Uh, so just bear in mind that there will be some oil there, so keep a rag handy as we go through the process and as I clean up, of course. Uh, the new one uh, looked very similar, uh, but it does come with a bolt, so you don't have to worry about it. And one of the things that I, I do want to say is when you put this back in, uh, I'm not using a uh, impact gun or even an air power or even just an electric, uh, you know, uh, drill for that matter because uh, the threads are pretty fine. That valve cover gasket that or that valve cover that's holding that on uh, can be kind of soft. The metal is usually soft, so I like to hand thread these in, and you can kind of see it takes me a, an attempt or two to get it in there. But then after that, uh, the bolt will pull that cam sensor into place so you won't feel any tension until that cam sensor starts to sink down in there. And when that sinks in there and it starts to become tight, you know, I tend to give it like a, you know, hand tight plus maybe a quarter turn uh, just so that it's not super tight. So, hey, if it ever breaks again, I got to come back and do it again because, you know, hey, stuff breaks. And that's pretty much all she wrote. This is not a very hard fix. But if you do get that P0013 or P0014 code, which is pretty common on these engines, uh, it's pretty easy to fix. That big uh, plastic piece that you saw me pull off is the entire uh, air intake. That's, it's the whole thing. And you can't replace it. Uh, so what you're going to see here is, you know, don't forget to reconnect uh, that connector to that cam sensor. But also, uh, you'll see me reconnect this uh, the, this bypass tube uh, for the valve cover breather. Uh, and what you'll also notice is that I make a mistake of trying to put the studs that hold it back on first and then match up to the throttle body. It's much easier to, to line up the throttle body gasket, which is a rubber gasket, uh, and kind of push that into place 
and then do the back two studs that are in there. So you'll see this process uh, happen right now. Yep, there I go. Try to put the back one in first. That's I, I learned pretty quickly that you can't do that. It doesn't line up quite right. So always do the throttle, uh, throttle, excuse me, throttle body gasket on first, and then do the two studs that are in the back. Yeah, see, it's just not. It doesn't want to go on quite right. Uh, you can see me kind of jiggle a little bit, and that's not working very well. Yeah, pushing harder does not work. Just giving you the heads up on that one. So pull it off. Yep, repositioned it. There we go. Now you can reposition the studs in the back. Uh, give those a little tap. Tap, tap, tap. Yep, fist, fist tap. There you go. Put my hand underneath there just to check to make sure the gas gets seated properly. It's in there. Reconnect your air tube from your air box. And I was changing the oil at the same time, so that's why I have the air oil cap off. And that's why I don't replace it because I go, I, I replace it later, so don't worry about that. Oil does not come shooting out of there. That band is just a simple screwdriver, not a big deal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the car, we're going to turn the key, and uh, you'll notice that the check engine light of the CEL, the MIL, whatever you call it, is still on here. When I turn the car on, I'm using my torque app again, I'm going to reset the codes. And that's still on because it's still in memory, so i got to clear it from memory. I'm going to clear it from memory. Shut the car off, and then I'm going to turn it back on again. So as soon as we're, yep, so the, that worked. We're going to turn it off. We're going to turn it back on just to make sure that the check engine light stays off. And sure enough, it stayed off because we fixed the problem, fixed it right. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, and hope this was helpful. Thanks, guys.